All right, so my name is Keegan Goldman. I'm Parker Eland. And uh, we decided to do a cardio <coughs> lesson in baseball. Uh, a little history about it. Uh, Abner Doubleday was uh, credited with inventing the game in 1839. But the actual history is a little bit more complicated. They say he invented it in Cooperstown, New York. Uh, but there were games resembling baseball in the U.S. that date back to the 18th century. Uh, and then baseball also resembles cricket and rounders for England. And then Alexander Joy Carrey uh, formed a new set of rules for the basis of like modern day baseball in 1845. And then in 1846, the Knicker Blockers played the first official game of baseball against a team of cricket players. Um, so why we chose baseball? We chose it as a topic because calculus can be seen throughout majority of baseball and with the correct data can even give an advantage to a team if they're able to calculate the needed speed to speed out a ground ball per se or figure out the difference in area under the curve of a fastball compared to a curveball. And then for our first topic we did related rates between like the distance between a fielder fielding a ground ball that was hit at uh, third base uh, in change of relation to the batter running to first base. Um, so first we can assume that, or if we assume the average MLB player runs at a speed of about 27 feet per second and the ground ball is traveling towards third at a rate of 45 feet per second, how will the distance change between the runner and the ball when the fielder receives the ball at a time of t equal to two? So let's assume that x is equal to the distance the runner has traveled at t equals time and the ball is traveling at a constant velocity of 45 feet per second. Uh, we then know that dx dt over dt equals 27, which is the speed of the runner in feet per second. And we want to determine dt over, or dt over dt when x equals 54. And then we started with the Pythagorean theorem, which is d squared equals x squared plus 9 squared. And then we differentiate with respect to t, which basically just divides by 2. Uh, and then and when we do x equals 54, the square root of 54 squared plus 90 squared. And then we substitute uh, square root of 54 squared plus 90 squared uh, is dt e over dt equals uh, 54 times 27. And then dp over dt equals 54 times 27 over square root of 54 squared uh, plus 90 squared. And that gives us 1,458 divided by 104. Which equals about 13.891 feet per second. And 13.891 uh, feet per second is the rate at which the distance between the runner and the ball is increasing when the runner is 54 feet down the line. Um, so then our next topic was average velocity. Um, so unfortunately, we couldn't do average velocity on the x axis due to some complications with the capstone. So we decided to do average velocity with respect to the y, or with respect to y on the y-axis, so the up and down um, with a curveball and a fastball. The average velocity of the fastball. So the baseball mound is 50, or 60.5 feet away from the home plate, and we use capstone to mark points on the curve when we put those points into our calculator to find the equation of the curve. Uh, and then the equation of the position function that we found was uh, y equals negative 1.13, 1 that huge number right there. And then, uh, and then we found the velocity function also with respect to y, which is y equals negative 13.144529042944x plus 34.9166. Um, so let's just do some math. We integrated the velocity function from 2.383 to 2.947, which were the timestamps where the ball was thrown and then received. And then we divided that by the difference, um, which is like the total time it took to throw the ball on the calculator to get the average velocity with respect to y. And the average velocity on the y-axis came out to be about negative 0.11357 feet per second. So that's about how fast the ball moved up and down throughout the throw. And then we found the average velocity of the curveball. And again, the mound is 60.5 feet away from the plate. And we use capstone again to find the points on the curve to find the equation of the curve. Uh, the velocity of the curve 
with respect to y is y equals negative 40, 0, 8, 5, 6, 2, 1, 3, 7, 3, 2, 4, 7, x plus 58.9638366047977. And then as you can see, with like our position functions, it's a lot different with the fastball. As the fastball had a slight curve, but was a little more straight, and the curveball is now a lot steeper. Um, so then do the math again. So we integrated um, this equation from 1.193 to 1.923, which again was the timestamp, how long it took. Um, then we divided that by the difference again to get the average velocity with respect to y. Um, and average velocity on the y-axis came out to be about negative 3.48953 per second, which makes sense because the velocity is going to be a little bit bigger in the negative direction as it is a curveball and would move um, up and down a little bit more. Uh, any questions?